All right, we're recording. Okay, great. So uh, we have a senior VP of Beachbody, Michael Neiman. I'm sure you recognize him from the, the team uh, cycle bonus call uh, YouTube video he made with his, I think it was his kids' toys that he used. He's been with Beachbody since 2006, and he helped launch the coaching network, actually. And he's, he has 20 years' experience with network marketing. I like uh, Michael Neiman because I think he uses like his left side of his brain and his right side of his brain. And what I mean by that, he's, he's very analytical. Um, he does, he makes, uh, he's the one that created the, partly who created the leadership ladder, which he's going to talk about. He's a numbers guy. I've seen him do some great presentations with numbers at the leadership event, but he's also uses the other side of his brain. He's very creative. I think he went to like acting school, maybe something like that. Um, so he takes the numbers and he puts his, uh, his creative spin on it uh, to make it fun. So I'm really excited to have Michael on the call to share a little bit about uh, the things he's noticed that some of the, the successful coaches have been doing and talk a little bit about the leadership ladder. And then maybe we can uh, ask him a few questions at the end if we have some time. Mike, we're very excited to have you. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. I'm going to let you run with this thing. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Can you guys hear me okay? Perfect. All right, Patrick wasn't confident that I would be able to actually get on a Zoom call. Yeah. He, he had doubts. You know, it's like, if Jeff Hill can do it, I have a lot of faith in you. I know oh, you guys have good. this little rivalry going. I'm rooting for you, though. This isn't my first Zoom call, just so you know. Okay, I, good, good. I think it's my third. But, third, third. Yeah. I think Jeff, when he did our team call, I think it was his second. So you're ahead of him. Yeah, I'm always ahead of Jeff. Uh, so anyway, well, thank you. Thanks for that nice introduction. And, and I'm, I'm really happy to be able to uh, spend a few minutes with you guys and, and talk a little bit. And, um, you know, it's just, uh, I, I hope that you guys um, love what you're doing as, as Team Beachbody coaches. Definitely, I love what I do um, working here um, for Beachbody and particularly for, for Team Beachbody and, and all of the coaches it's been. Um, I, I was just telling, I was just interviewing um, somebody for a position and um, I was telling them that by, by far this is the greatest place that I've ever worked and, and, and one of the reasons why it's so great is because almost every day, um, you, you know, to be honest with you, it is a job and we come in and sometimes we don't want to come in and we've got like a busy schedule and there's a ton of stuff that we have to do and, you know, we'd rather be doing something else and, but we come in and we do it. Um, but what makes it special is that almost every day we hear some story that validates what we do. Um, it, whether it's, you know, somebody who, you know, through the products has, has, you know, changed their lives, gotten more confident, feel better about themselves, or a coach who's had some great success. And so, you know, just being a part of something where um, we're, we're just, every day you can look around and see a success story of where what we're doing is helping somebody um, just makes it um, really, really a, a valuable place for me at least to be hopefully you guys um, have all experienced that in, in some way and 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 I know that's the thing that um, for me like really pushes me forward and, and gets me through those um, you know the, the times when I am like stuck in some horrible spreadsheet trying to you know figure my way out of something and and I and and I think like oh my god what's the point of this and then you know, an hour later, you'll see some success story and you'll realize what the point of it is. Um, and so hopefully all of you guys have, have, um, have experienced that. So anyway, I was talking um, over... Um, or when Carl, like, poo-poos one of your pitches, one of your ideas. Carl never poo-poos my pitches. Really? I, I, I don't believe that. I've seen some videos. Uh, no, he does occasionally, but eventually he comes back around and and sees the genius in, in the idea, um, or at least I, I con him into saying the genius. Um, but, um, but anyway, I was, I was going back and forth on Facebook Messenger with Patrick, and um, he was also surprised that I knew what Facebook Messenger was too. So he has, Patrick has very little confidence in my, in my abilities outside of... Uh, I'm just making sure we're prepared, you know? I, I have all the faith, but I don't want to assume anything. All right, all right. So we were kind of talking about uh, what what I might talk about, and one of the things that um, 
one of the things that always have, so we go out to the Super Saturday. Um, so wait, Joanna's saying, does this sound more quiet than usual? Am I not talking loud enough? Can you hear me? I can hear you good. Pretty well. All right. I th yeah. Uh, maybe she just needs All right, Joanne, I'll try and be louder and more, more animated. Uh, so, uh, we need some so, so we go out to the Super Saturdays every quarter, and, um, and always the first Super Saturday of the year um, is when we announce who our elite coaches are and who our elite 10 coaches are. And um, Jeff and Carl and, 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 um, and I and a couple of the other executives will travel actually to the Super Saturdays where our top 10 are. So we can kind of personally congratulate them. And usually in those January Super Saturdays, there'll be some panel that I'm up with sitting with all of the elite coaches uh, and there'll be a Q&A. And in the back of the room, always somebody raises their hand and says, so what exactly do I have to do to become an elite coach? Um, or another question might come is, you know, I really want to leave my job. So, so I want, I want to do Beachbody full time. So what exactly do I have to do in order to get there? Um, and it's a good question. Um, there's not exactly a perfect answer to it. Um, but, but we started thinking about that, about what kind of does it take? What is that pathway to find um, success because it doesn't happen overnight. It, it happens. Um, it happens over a series of things. And I've had the um, good fortune also not just to not just to um, congratulate those elite ten trips, but um, Jeff and Carl and I and John Congan actually take them on a very nice trip uh, once a year to some fantastic place. I think uh, next year we're going to Bora Bora, and this past year we were in. Um, we were in France, and they're fantastic. And and one of the, my the opportunities that I get on those trips is I get to sit down and talk to these elite ten and sort of say like, how did you get here, and 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 what sort of the, the keys to your success. Um, so I thought today I'd talk a little bit about that and a little bit about um, the leadership ladder, which hopefully you've heard about. If not, um, we can we'll, we'll go through that a little bit and and just kind of what I've heard from them about how they have found success in this business. Um, and, um, and, and you guys are in, in good hands. I mean, Patrick there's uh, um, had some success in this business, so he can talk a little bit firsthand. Um, but, but let me tell you a little bit what I found. So the, the first thing that I found in terms of the elite coaches and elite, elite 10 coaches, but really all elite coaches, um, one of the consistent things that, that um, they do is that – they set it as a goal. And so, and so having a goal and having a really clear vision for that goal is just so important. It seems obvious and kind of cliche like that you should have this goal, um, but they all do. And it's really interesting. Like they all set this goal um, that they work towards. And sometimes the goal is, you know, pretty extreme from where they are, quite a distance, you know, from, from where their coaching is until – where they get there. And, you know, we actually, this past, um, for those of you that were at summit, when I was introducing the elite 10, a lot of them became, you know, haven't even been coaches that long. They've been coaches maybe a couple years. Um, <coughs> but very early on, they got this vision that, and often it's because they were at a summit event or something and saw the other elite 10 up on stage. And they said, I think I want to do that. I think I want to be up there on, on that stage. Um, so, so they had this vision, and then they said, how do I get there? Um, the reality is, is that getting to become an Elite 10 coach or getting to say, um, I want to be earning $100,000 a year um, so I can quit my job or $50,000 a year, um, it, it, does, it, 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 it takes that vision, but then it takes um, a lot of work and, um, and, and kind of um, a path to get there. Um, one of the things that people don't think about, even in terms of, of just sticking on the elite coaches for, for a second before I, I jump over to the leadership ladder, but when you think about an elite coach and how do you become an elite coach? Well, you become an elite coach by earning elite points, um, and I'll talk about those in a second, and becoming a five-star diamond or higher. Um, so it's really, and, and what the elite points are all about, it's all about building a productive organization. Um, and it kind of will tie to the leadership ladder in a second. But 
When you think about elite points, there's three ways that you earn elite points. And, and they all come from um, basically your personal activity and the personal activity of your organization, your personally sponsored organization and your advancement team. And your advancement team, sorry, I'm going to get really technical and without the toys, it's, it's hard. Um, your, your advancement team is actually three levels down of personal sponsorship. So it's who you sponsored, who they sponsored, and who they sponsored. But that's your advancement. And the reason why we define the advancement team as that is that usually those three levels are the people that you have influence over. After you start getting below three levels, and it's actually three levels is, is the number of levels that impacts your rank. That's why it's called advancement team, so rank advancement. Um, so anything below three levels has no bearing on your rank at all. It has bearing on your, on your volume and things like that, but not on your rank. Um, so what we looked at in, in elite points is, is one, um, all of the people, so first thing we look at it, we say, is your organization growing over the prior year, your advancement team organization? We say that, you know, in the previous year, let's say those three levels of coaches, all of their sales activity totaled 100,000 volume points. And so we look to say for every incremental amount you grow up beyond that, you can earn uh, you can earn elite points. I think if I'm right, it's for every 10,000 points, you get one elite point. Uh, the other way that you earn it is through um, – the activity of your new personally sponsored coaches in that year. So the personal volume of the new of your new coaches. So you earn for every 500 points, you can earn one success foot point. But the big thing in elite, the big way people rack up a bunch of points is when their personally sponsored coaches qualify for success club. And that's their personally sponsored coaches from the current year and the prior year. So not just the current year, but the current year and the prior year. Whenever anyone in that group qualifies for Success Club, you get an elite point. And if you also qualify for Success Club in that month, you double it. So if you have, if you have five coaches, five personally sponsored coaches who qualify for Success Club in the month of February, and you also qualify for Success Club, instead of five points, you get 10 points. If you have 20 coaches who are qualifying for Success Club and you qualify, you got 40 points. So that, ish, that idea of having coach, personally sponsored coaches who qualify for Success Club and you qualifying is the biggest um, sort of lever to earning S Success Club. Now, why is that? Like, what do we care? The reality is that when your personally sponsored people are qualifying for Success Club, that means that you have more people who are, are, are understands how to bring people in and connect people to Beachbody products, to challenge groups, whatever. And that's building the foundation for your business. It's one thing if it's just you qualifying for a success club every month. Um, that's fantastic. But more personally sponsors that you are having in that, succeeding in that, that's building the foundation for your business because that means if you have all these people who are bringing in at least three new customers or coaches a month, you have a better opportunity that those three people that they're bringing in are going to get results with the product, they're going to become believers themselves, they're going to become productive coaches themselves, and then they're going to start doing that same thing. And that builds your advancement team volume. So that's where Elite comes in. And the real key to that and the, and, and the key way I say setting a goal, even if that goal is out there a ways, is that the thing to think about is that if you want to qualify for elite in 2016, the trick to it is having a great year in 2015. Because 2015 is going to set up your year for 2016. Because if you personally sponsor, let's say even one coach a month in 2015, that's 12 more coaches that you have in your pool in 2016 that can qualify for Success Club and help you earn those points. So that's my little pitch on Elite. But I'm going to take a step backwards and, and talk a little bit. We talked about that pathway. And is there a way that I can share my screen? Yeah, so if you <clears throat> hover your mouse over the video, 
uh, over the video. Yeah. Whatever you're looking at, whoever, probably me because I'm talking. If you hover oh, yeah. your mouse over me, there'll be a little green thing that says share screen. Oh, I see. You click okay. on that and then you select uh, desktop. Okay. Hopefully I don't have anything incriminating. Yeah. Or you can just, uh, I think you might be able to select just the thing you want to share. Uh, I'll never find it because I have 8,000 windows open, but let me see if I can find it. Um, okay. Wait. Share screen. Hold on. Don't go away. Can you see that? The little leadership ladder thing? Yep, we got it. Okay. Awesome. So now you can't see me? Or no, you can we, can see, we can see you. There's a few people, I think, that have called in on the phone. Um, okay. So All I'll, right. Well, I'll talk through it a little bit. Yeah. All right. I just didn't know if you couldn't see me, I'd let my hair down. But since <laughs> um, we saw you take a little sip. I'll have to still be on my best behavior. Um, so inside the coach office, and I wanted to, I wanted to kind of pull up the office so that you guys could see it. Um, but inside the coach office, under the news and training section, um, then over here under leadership ladder to your left, it kind of pulls up this little chart. And so the leadership ladder was something we developed going back to that earlier question of people that said, hey, I want to earn a full-time income. What's the pathway to get there? And so um, what we did was we looked at a lot of people who um, we looked at, we, we actually started at the, at the right-hand side of it and said, well, let's look at coaches who are earning $100,000 a year. Um, and if they're earning $100,000 a year, what basically does their profile look at? What are the attributes that we can look at for those guys? And then we took that group and kind of went back in time and kind of saw where they were at when they were a two-star coach, where they were at when they were a diamond coach, where they were at when they were an emerald coach, and kind of built this pathway to get there. Um, and, and so that people could kind of get a gauge for, um, for where they should be driving their business towards the next rung in order to kind of build a foundation that sets you up for the next rung. Um, and so as we kind of work backwards and, and, and what we looked at was we said, okay, on this sort of leadership ladder and the, and the five different rungs of the ladder, what are the things that we should look at? What are the things that we should measure along the way, the benchmarks that we should set for coaches? Um, and so we said, well, one of the things that we want to see are that they're making a certain amount of money. So you can see that first line are commissions, really commissions and bonuses. That that uh, that the first rung of a business starter that they're making at least a hundred dollars. It says a hundred BP. Those are bonus points. Uh, a bonus point is basically equivalent to a U.S. dollar. Um, the reason why we went to bonus points of dollars is are for our Canadian friends because they have to translate theirs into Canadian um, dollars. But but BP stands for bonus points, which are the equivalent equivalent to a US dollar. Um, and so what we wanted to say was for a new coach getting started in the business, or even a coach who's been in the business for a while, but is looking to kind of reignite themselves, that the first rung of the ladder is really about qualifying for a success club. And, and you know, we have, we have, this is very similar to our, our success starter program. And the only real difference between this and a success starter is that a success starter, it has to happen within your first full month of the business. We're just saying, Someone could be in the business forever and decide, okay, wake up and say, I really want to go for it. And so the first activity that, you know, any coach should master is what does it take to qualify for success club? And, and you know, it's funny. It, it, a lot of times it's, it's so easy to say that, like, oh, you should qualify for success club. And it's like, okay, check. The reality is, is that that's not that easy. I mean, the reality is, is that, okay, how do you do that? Like, you know, how do, how do people qualify for success club? I realize it's only, you know, connecting with three people selling three challenge packs or two challenge packs and one chick all GHD, but like, how do you even go about doing that? Um, well, the good news is that hopefully you have some, you know, a strong upline who can give you some, some tips. Um, hopefully, um, if not, you can also kind of look over on this side of the training. You can see at the coach level, um, that kind of give you some tips. Um, the one thing that I would say that I think is really important um, is, is, that, is that 
like the thing I hate about charts like this are that there are a bunch of numbers. And the reality is, is that we're not a numbers business. We're a people business. And, and so um, I think sometimes when you put numbers and you say you should qualify for a success club, which means you got to sell three challenge packs, people are just thinking like, okay, I got to sell three challenge packs, check off the three challenge packs. The reality is, is that that's not what we do as a company. What we do as a company is that we're a people company and we connect to people and we help solve people's problems and we connect them to products that are going to give them solutions. Um, and so hopefully what we're doing to qualify for success club is, um, is connecting people to challenge groups, um, um, getting them connected to the products that are going to help them, whether, you know, the fitness program, Shakeology. And then the question is, how do you do that? And I think that a lot of that comes from building relationships. And, and you know, there are people that, that do a great job of what, what I, what, what um, in, in my sort of um, view of the coach world, the people that are doing this um, the most effective way is that they're doing it by creating a presence on social media um, and sort of sharing their own personal life in a truthful way. And what you find is that um, there are lots of people, no matter who you are, um, there's so many people in the world that no matter who you are, um, there's a ton of people who are just like you or who want to be just like you. I tell that to Jeff Hill all the time, and he is so fearful that there are more people like me out there. Um, but, um, but, but so I really, you know, like, like the whole thing, the whole sort of process, it doesn't start with this chart. The process starts with um, you going out there and connecting to people. Um, and, and, and how you do that, um, I, I would say, you know, like, like look around at what other successful people are doing. Um, you know, I do that all the time. Like I, like kind of, Carl doesn't know this, but I eavesdrop on Carl all the time and watch him and see what can I pick up from him and what can I learn from him. And, um, and, and, you know, I'm sure he's doing the same thing too, but, but so I, I would say that the first step, um, in terms of the benchmark is that you want, or you want your coaches um, to be prepared and have all the skills and competencies and confidence to be able to start connecting with people in a way that they will qualify for success club. Um, and again, tips from the upline, tips from the coach office, and tips from just um, stalking people and learning what they're doing and, and putting those practices into, into action. So once you qualify for success club, um, and basically by qualifying for success club, you'll pretty much hit that, um, hit that hundred dollar, um, threshold of business starter. Um, you've hit the first rung and that's fantastic. Congratulations. Um, the next step is, is to become a team builder. Um, and you'll notice that the team builder, the rank goes to Emerald. And I know a lot of people think like right when they join an organization, their first goal is, okay, you got to become an Emerald coach. And, and a lot of times they tell um, people might hear, um, so sign up your spouse and your mother-in-law. Um, or the first two people you can think of, you know, who will listen to you, sign them up so you can become an Emerald. Um, and that's good, I guess. But the reality is, is that that's not necessarily building the foundation of your business. Um, and so what we're asking people to do in the leadership ladder is think bigger than just Emerald. Um, your spouse and mother-in-law, I'm sure, are fantastic people and they should be coaches. Um, but, but I think organically, you want to be continuing to bring people into your challenge groups um, so, that, so that they um, – so that the next thing happens. And that is, of course, you're going to, so going down this list, uh, you're going to be in success club five. You're going to be at least an Emerald coach. They're going to have at least two people in your organization, one on your left and one on your right. But more likely you're going to have to have more than just those two people in your organization because, and this is really the key that starts building the momentum in your organization. You're going to want to have at least two personally sponsored coaches. I'm on the fourth line down and the third column over. You're going to want to have at least two personally sponsored coaches that have at least one success club point in the month. 
not that you have two people that are in success club, but two people that have at least one success club. Because what that tells you is that you at least have two people in your personally sponsored organization that have sort of mastered the, the practice of connecting to people and bringing them into their world. You know, whether it's a customer or a coach, selling them a challenge pack, getting them involved in a challenge group. But when you have at least two coaches, two personally sponsored coaches that are doing that, suddenly now you're starting to build an organization, not just by your own efforts, but by your efforts and your team's efforts. And so, and so that is really critical. And when that happens, our goal is also that you're starting to generate at least 200 team volume points in your weak leg. Um, so we want people thinking not just about, um, and again, how do you generate volume points? The best team volume points, the best way to do that is to be having coaches like you in your organization who are believers in the product or believers in, in, in what the, the, you know, in what um, products can do for you and that those people are now bringing other people into the organization. That's how team volume starts to grow. And hopefully as a team builder, you'll start to build those people in those enrollers in your organization. Um, you'll start to build up that team volume. And at some point you'll start earning $250 a month. And that's fantastic. And it really is fantastic because that's a start and all of this is building. Um, the next rung, which I think is probably like the most important rung, because I think this is a hard rung to get to, but by the time you do get to this rung, your business really has a solid foundation. And what we start to see is that it really starts to accelerate your business at this point. So the team builder rung is we want, we want diamond coaches who are making at least a thousand dollars a month. Um, and you know, it's funny. We all, I always joke that a lot of times people get started and, and they hear, I got to get to diamond. I got to get to diamond. They think that when they get to diamond, like suddenly it's going to start raining money and like all of their problems will be solved and they can start, you know, shopping for the yacht. Um, and the reality is, is that it doesn't, it, in terms of the size, the minimum size of your organization to be a, a diamond, it really just takes two emeralds and three other coaches on, on each leg. So that's, it's just at a minimum, a 12 person organization and a 12 person organization, I think might generate, I don't know, like under a thousand team volume points. So, you know, you might cycle bonus a couple times, but you're not making that much money right when you hit diamond, but hitting diamond with those 12 people is starting to build the skeleton of an organization that will really start to grow. But again, we want you to think bigger than Diamond. So at Diamond, and again, I'll go down to that fourth row, which is I think the most, I guess, one, two, three, four, it's really the fifth row, um, which is you need to have at least four of your personally sponsored coaches who are earning at least one success club point. This is so critical. I can't tell you how many diamonds do not have this and they are not diamonds for long. They tend to fall in and out of diamond. Those that are diamond that, that have this criteria tend to not just stay there, but continue to grow. Um, and then, and then also building again, having your organization starting to grow, you'll see that your volume will start to grow. So we want you to keep going until you have 5,000 in your weak leg you'll end up earning a thousand points. Now, just one thing at this team leader level, and I'm gonna, I have to try and remember this, so hopefully my numbers are correct. But if I recall, we looked at diamonds who were in January of 2014, and we broke it up into diamonds who were, um, diamonds who also met all the attributes of team leader, and diamonds who didn't meet team leader. The diamonds who, um, who didn't, meet the, all the attributes of team leader, 10 months later, I want to say that like, oh, a pretty good percent of the, I want to say like um, 30 some odd percent of them were still diamonds 10 months later. Diamonds that had met the attributes of team leader, 99% of them 10 months later were either a paid diamond or higher. 
And what was even more impressive was that that same group, when we looked 10 months later, 10% of the non-team leader diamonds had advanced in rank to a star diamond. 10% of them, just 10 months later, had already become a one star or higher. Of the, t of the who were team leaders, 63% of them had then advanced in rank to star diamond. And so you could see, and, and really what I think the key to it is, is that these four coaches that you have, these four personally sponsored coaches, I guess you can't see me pointing to my screen, but I'm pointing to the number four. Um, those four coaches and the fact that, that um, those guys are already in enrolling activity, enrolling behavior, those guys are likely on their way to becoming diamonds themselves. And, 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 and I think that the key thing that you have to think about here when we say you need to have four personally sponsored coaches, and so again, as a diamond, the minimum you would have is eight personally sponsored coaches. The probability that four of those eight are actually an enrolling activity, actually earning a success club point, is pretty low, to be honest with you. So the reality is, is that you need to continue, you need to be constantly bringing people into, um, into new coaches because you might need 20 personally sponsored coaches to get four of them that are in enrolling activity. You know, you may be lucky and all eight of your coaches are in enrolling activity. And if that's true, you're probably going to be um, a superstar diamond pretty quickly. Um, but, but, you know, it's, it's setting that it's, but knowing that you have to set these goals out there to keep going after team leader, it goes to organizational leader. This is where we like our two star diamonds to think about trying to align with these attributes. So a two star diamond, we hope that you have at least six people, um, six of your personally sponsored that are enrolling activity. And this is really important that you have at least two of your personally sponsored coaches that are team leaders. Um, hey, Michael? And, yeah. You said you think that the team leader rung is probably the most important. Yeah. Um, and just listening to you, this is such a, a better benchmark than, than rank. Is that me drawing? Or, I think so. It's not me. Uh, I don't know who did that. I don't, is there a way to like undo that? Does anyone know? I don't think I did that. You know me, my Zoom skills are limited, so. Yeah, um, mine, are not, mine are not good at crayons. Okay. Um, so I like it, though. It's sort yeah, of. It just looks good, right? man. You got you know, to fight through some stuff sometimes. Yeah. Um, okay, so when, you're talk, when I'm talking to coaches, I think from now on, instead of, like, uh, really emphasizing getting to Diamond, it's going to be more about getting four personally sponsored coaches that are getting at least one successful point a month. If you're doing that, your business is moving in the right direction. And 99% of the coaches that you said in January, 2014 that had four personally sponsored coaches that had at least one successful point a month were advancing to, to star diamond and two star diamond, what, eight, eight months later or something like that. 10 months later. Yeah. Ten months later. 63%. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's, it's true. And, and the one thing that I would say, you know, Patrick, and, and for everybody really, is that, again, I'll go back to saying it's, it's really easy to say you should do this. What it's hard is to actually do it. Um, and, 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 and I think that one of the ways that you do get people being successful in, in, starting, to, um, in starting to kind of start their own challenge group, starting to have success themselves, is that really – they're watching you and following your activity. Um, so it's really easy for, you know, like, like if, if, if you call and say like, Hey, remember you got to get four. Um, like they'll go, okay, great. But they don't know how to get four. And the way that they typically do it is that, is that they're looking to see what are you posting on social media? What are, what are the activities that you're doing? Because that's what they're going to naturally follow. And, and, and what we also find are that the coaches that we've seen coaches kind of go up and move through the ranks and then, and then uh, retire sort of, and they kind of stop doing their own, you know, three vital behaviors 
And what happens is their team stops too. And, and their team stops growing as well. And so what you do in terms of, of how you find success, like that's, like that's what people are going to be watching and that's how you're going to start developing other people. Um, just one other thing, like if you look back and like some of our, our coaches, you know, like uh, some of our top coaches, like a Melanie Mitro or a, or a, a, a Lindsay Matway who've been top coaches the last couple of years, um, or a Janelle Summers who has a huge, you know, organization, um, or, a, um, you know, like a, a Tracy Morrow, who I think you guys are all kind of in the Tracy Morrow line somewhere. Um, like one of the things that you see from these guys that are building, um, can you still see me? Yeah. Okay. One of the things that, that you see these coaches that, that are starting to have these like massive organizations is that they have so many personally sponsored team leaders. Um, you know, like, like Janelle Summers used to always amaze me because I look at her advancement team volume and like every year it keeps growing when I think like, how could it grow anymore? It's like, you know, it's like 12 million points or something like that. How can it grow? And like then every year she beats it. And like, and the reason why she beats it is because her developing of the people on her team is so powerful that she always has of her personally sponsored, like, I don't know, like 20 or 30 team leaders, like right in her personally sponsored line. And then that starts to translate down. Um, so, so that's where I think that the, the leadership ladder um, is just, it's a great set of benchmarks uh, along the way. Um, so that's my little spiel on the leadership ladder. Um, if I can share one other thing, I'm going to yeah, share. If you, want, guess. if you had time, I guess yeah. I want to briefly touch on those last two rungs. Yeah. Okay. Let me go back to that. I think that would kind of tie into what we were talking about with Janelle. Okay. Um, like what your, what your organization would look like if you did. Yes. Yeah. So here's over here. Um, you know, like, like, can you see the screen now? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so organizational leader, same thing. You're qualifying for Success Club. And again, that is so important because your behavior is what's going to dictate your team. Um, you need to be a two-star. And again, I, I talked about uh, six personally sponsored and two team leaders. Um, the executive leader, the executive leader is that person who at $8,500 uh, a month is earning $100,000 a year. So we kind of set that benchmark there having uh, eight personally sponsored coaches that are in Success Club activity or have earning at least one Success Club point, 50,000 team volume points on your weak leg. Again, that's not total. That's just on your weak leg. So that means you have a minimum of 100,000 team volume points. So these are people that are really starting to build um, a, a large organization um, and that they have at least four personally sponsored team leaders. Um, and again, totally this fits like somebody like kind of the Lindsay's and Melanie's and Janelle's they have a ton more team leaders they're also making more than a hundred thousand dollars a year um, right. you know, so, so it kind of ties to the income so so that's the that's the leadership ladder we just introduced it this year um, I think that once people start to um, get their mind you know it's so interesting around setting goals um, back before we had success club um, people did not, people, coaches, um, were not as successful. <laughs> um, and, and it was setting those five points as a baseline. Suddenly people thought, oh, I can do that. And, and like, it just, their, their activity intensified to get there. And then once they got there, they kind of stayed there. Um, there was a great, um, um, Jen Wall, who, who was on the last Super Saturday video, um, she was in, I forget, like one of the team cups or fall class. I think it was the February team cup. And she was not like her, she was kind of just doing average in her business and um, decided that she wanted to like win the team cup. And so she thought in order for me to win the team cup, I've got to have 50 success club points in the first week. Like it was some outrageous like thing that she challenged herself to do. And then um, she ended up having, 
I don't remember the exact numbers, but I feel like 141 success club points that month. And then after that, she said, I'm just going to set the bar at 50 points every month. And like every month since then, she got like 80 points and 71 points. But it was like suddenly like she was able, like her mindset changed. And by changing the mindset, it changed the activity necessary to get there. Um, I used to equate it, like I'm not a coach. So like I always feel sort of bad, like spouting out all this stuff and I don't have to actually do it. Um, but like, like the, the, the sort of the thing that I always think about was, I remember a long time ago, cause I'm old now, um, when my wife and I bought our first house and I remember, um, it was in LA, this is LA, it wasn't that expensive, but it was like, I remember my mortgage payment was going to be like, I think it was like $1,150 was my mortgage payment for my little thousand square foot house in Van Nuys, California. And, um, and I thought, I remember buying the house and I remember seeing that number of 1150 and thinking like, there is no way that I'll ever be able to make this payment at the end of the month or when it was due. And like, I, I like that month, like I really like for the first time looked at my budget and kind of, Push things around and I scrimped and I saved and I got there and I remember like writing that check for the first time and like taking a deep well then I, I waited and saw that the check cashed and then like I took a deep breath and then a sigh of relief and then like the next month I did it again and then like by the third month I never even thought about it like I just never even thought about writing that check again and um, and it and it was because all the behavior that I needed to do had changed in order for me to meet that goal. And, and like, and, and I think like before that, my rent was like $500. So like it had doubled um, to buy this house. And, it, and, and I changed the behavior, I did it. And after a few months, that behavior just became what it took to get there. And I never even thought about it. Again. I never thought about making that mortgage payment again. Um, and so I think a lot of times that's kind of how life is. And, and I think that's how per perhaps the coaching business can be in that you set a goal and then it's like you really think about, well, what's it going to take for me to get there? How many, you know, how many followers on Facebook am I going to have to have in order to start attracting people to, you know, in order to get three people into my challenge group this month? You know, um, I have 20 friends now, maybe I need 2,000 and what's it going to take for me to get that? And, and how am I going to get those 2,000 people to start believing in what, uh, what, this can do for them, I guess I'm going to have to show them what it's doing for me through my posts and things like that. So anyway, so that's, that's that on the leadership ladder. I wanted to jump to this other slide. You, you may have seen it. Oops. But you may have seen it. Um, I that executive ladder or executive leader, the last rung, because <clears throat> people ask that all the time. That's kind of like they'd like to get to that point where they're making a six figure income so they could replace their full time income and then some. And it looks like kind of the big, for me, the big takeaway there is you have to develop four team leaders if you want to create that six figure income. Right. And, and, and I think the other thing, um, Patrick, is that for a lot of people, they want that and, but they want it, but they, they might be sort of at the team builder level. Right. And they want to be at the executive leader like next month. <laughs> right, right. And the reality is that it takes time. It takes consistency and time to get there. Yeah. Um, it takes time to get to team leader yourself, let alone develop four team leaders of your own. But yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen this um, chart. Can you see this on the page? Yeah, yep. Yep. Uh, so um, I don't know, one percent of diamonds were customers first. I don't think that's this is an old chart, so I don't think that's accurate anymore. I but think um, like uh, I think it's like seventy or eighty percent of diamonds. Yeah customers at one point yeah. yeah but but forget about that little circle part but the rest of it um i actually stole this chart um from some consultant came in to try and pitch me their you know how they could help us and they had like all this data and um and this chart really resonated with me and, and what these guys had done was across sort of the the um, direct selling industry they had surveyed all of these um they had surveyed um, a bunch of successful distributors and, and what they found was of the most successful ones, 
that they had kind of um, followed this pathway um, into into the business. And and really, what happened for the the these successful ones is they they started out. Somebody had talked to them about you know the products or the business or whatever, and they and they you know so somebody introduced them and and they came in and they joined. Um, usually just connecting to the product. So, so they're typically customers. And then um, the next kind of hurdle that they had to get to was to become a participant, I mean, actually use the products that they bought. And I think that, you know, that's a big hurdle for a lot of people. There's a lot of people that will buy products, but only a subset of them will actually ever use them. And I think that one of the one of the, um, the 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 things that a coach has to a really effective coach is is that not only can they just sell a product, but they can inspire the person to actually engage and use those products. And that's a huge huge step because without them using the products, it's very rare that they will actually get any results. And and when they do get results they tend to become an enthusiast about it, even before they get results. Like, it's always those people, and I'm definitely one of them. Like, I, I probably shouldn't admit this, but I really hate working out. And, and, like, I will fall off the wagon all the time and go for long periods, and then, like, someone will convince me to start working out, and I'll do it for, like, you know, a week, and then I'll stop again. But if I do it for, like, three weeks straight, then I'm totally into it and I, and I'll stick with it for a long period of time. And I actually sort of like start to look forward to working out. Um, I actually like start thinking like, Oh, five, I'm going to work out. And I start looking forward to it. And I become sort of an enthusiast in it. And then when you start to get results, you actually start to become an advocate, like whether you're a coach or not, you start to advocate for this thing that is starting to change your life. And what's, ha and what's happening in this is that you're building this organic belief system in the customer. And that those people, once they hit advocates and they're sort of these natural advocates for the products, those are the people that are going to become your most successful coaches. And those are the people that it's gonna be much easier for them to get that one success club point because they're already proof that the product works. They're already believing in the stuff and likely they already have people asking them, what are you doing? And I want to do it too. And I think that, you know, again, like going back to not to knock the sign up your wife and your mother-in-law thing, but the question is, do the people who you have personally sponsored do they have this belief system in Beachbody through their own personal experience? And, and that's why I think that challenge groups are so powerful or some form of challenge groups because the challenge groups hopefully create that bridge between driving someone from just buying a product to at least getting to the point where they're participating with the products and hopefully getting them to that three week mark where they're starting to get enthusiastic about it and then likely getting them if they get them that far to get them to the point of becoming an advocate. And so I, I go back and so I kind of wanted to finish here because I think that this is when, when you think about in the end and you think about sort of all the numbers that we talked about in the first half. So we talked about elite and, and getting personally sponsored coaches to qualify for success club and, um, and, and the leadership ladder and, and bringing in personally sponsored people who are in enrolling activity and, and, you know, basically building a productive organization. It all comes back to ultimately it comes back to, connecting people to products and getting them results because getting them results is ultimately what is going to feed all of those other numbers. And, and, and that's what's, and having productive coaches, coaches who are, have that, you know, organic belief system in what we're doing, those are the ones that are going to be the most productive. So anyway, that's my take on the situation and hope that wasn't too boring. That was awesome. I just actually uh, asked the guys if they had any questions. I don't know if they had time for like one or two. I was sure. just going to see if anyone hit us back up uh, in the chat. Uh, no. 
is this, can we get this photo somewhere? Or is this just that you kind of got yeah, this? Yeah, I can, I can, I'll, I'll send it to you, Patrick, and then you can send it out. It's somewhere in the coach office. I don't know where. Okay. But I will, um, I'll send it to you. Great. And again, so for the people that were on the uh, phone that couldn't see the leadership ladder, how did they get to that again? News and training. Oh yeah. It's in the, it's in the, um, it's here, news and training. And then you go over here to leadership ladder. And, and you know, the other thing that I'll tell you, hopefully, let me see. Um, the other thing that you may not know you is your own coach online office here, huh? In the coach, yeah, that's in the coach online office. Your and coach in your is one, I like that. You're the number yeah. one. This is like a fake one. This that's is just fun. like our little. This is our corporate one that's sort of fake. Gotcha. Um, um, but but in this section right here that that shows your whether you're successful, qualified, and all of that, there's a tab there called leadership ladder that's yeah. in everyone's office. And it'll actually tell you, like, last month, this was your rung. Your next rung that you should be going for is business starter. And then it tells you over here on the right side what the benchmarks are for you. And then it kind of tells you last month and this month kind of how you're stacking up. So this is a great place that I would encourage everybody, you know, at the start of every month to come look and say, okay, my next rung is this. This is what I need to do. How am I tracking against that? So again, that's right here on this first page. Right on the home page, the coach online office. That's great. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Um, okay. Uh, so should I unshare, stop share? Okay, there we go. Where in the back office can you go to see where you stand on a leadership ladder? So I, that's oh, I just showed that. that. Okay, I think you just answered that. Perfect. That's right on the, you can get it right on the homepage. Right on the homepage of the office. Click on the little tab that says leadership ladder right in the middle. Perfect. Awesome. All right. I think that's it. Unless you want, have anything that's coming up uh, before the end of the year, any surprises that you could tell us? We won't tell anybody, I swear. Mm, let's see. This isn't, this isn't recorded. It might be. Uh, I won't um, prizes. No, I can't think of anything. So... Um, wait, there's somebody asked a question. I have a question. Can't read it though. I have a question too, Pat. Okay. Terry, what's your question? Um, where can I get that south of the border stuff? So. Oh, I have it here. Um, I had it here. I don't know what, oh, it's right here. Look. It's called, uh, Midal? Uh, Midal. Midal. Midal, yeah. So somebody was at something, saw the little thing. Okay. I like that. Uh, Terry, go ahead. Oh, hi, Michael. Great call. Um, I have a question. I, I agree with you with the organic belief, and I feel like when someone joins a challenge um, and they, they love the products and they get the results, they're, you're, you know, it's exciting. Yeah. Now, the problem, I always feel like lately, and it's only if you have someone who doesn't love the Shakeology, maybe because it's not something that, um, you know, their digestion or something that it's not working. All of a sudden, I feel like, ah, they love this whole thing. If they don't like Shakeology, how are they going to share? This is our bread and butter. This is the thing that I feel like is an amazing product and the passion and everything for that product. And then you have someone, I feel like, oh, you know, what can, what can you do for them so that they can continue? Because I do, don't you feel like probably most of the um, most successful coaches ha have this amazing uh, desire to drink Shakeology? They love it. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing about Shakeology and the thing about challenge packs are that it's sort of a simple formula. So, so you know, it's, it's like you can talk to the broadest range of people with that of saying, like, look, if you work out, if you, you know, start focusing on your nutrition with Shakeology and, and I help keep you accountable, you're probably going to have success. So, so that sort of, that, that sort of um, it crosses the – you're right. You are going to come across people who maybe can't tolerate Shakeology um, for some reason. And, um, and, and I would say that I, I would say a couple things. One, you know, they might be, um, the, the performance line might be something that works for them. 
Um, there might be something else that would help them. Oh, and again, it comes back to them getting results, right? And 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 what I would say is that is that what works for them is likely there are other people out there that'll work for them too, for, for them as well. So I would say the performance line might work. The other thing I would say is that even if like the all of our nutritional products don't work for somebody, but they love, you know, they, they love 21 Day Fix or they love something. And so they might not fit, like they might not fit on that chart, meaning like they may never qualify for success club or they, they might not be, you know, the person getting you one of those, you know, one of your PS coaches to, um, to, to get at least one success club point, but they might still be passionate about it and still want to be a part of it. So you shouldn't ignore them. You know what I mean? Like, like, like they, they'll find their way or they won't find their way. I will say that it, it's hard to grow a coaching business and income in coaching business. If all you're doing is selling fitness programs, because there is no kind of compounded um, income opportunity. So while it's not impossible, it, it's definitely a slower route on the earning thing because you don't have any continuities building up in your organization. But I would try to see if, you know, the performance line works for them. The other thing that I would say also is that sometimes people, um, there's a difference between the regular Shakeology and the vegan Shakeology. And, you know, someone may have an issue with the, the whey protein um, that's, that's in the regular Shakeology and the vegan they can tolerate better um, or vice versa. So that's, that's what, what I tell had, you. We had two young athletes who both started a coaching and they both got Success Club 10 immediately. And I mean, they want to be coaches. They're young and ready to roll. And then both of them, when we're asking them about the shake, neither one of them liked it. I'm like, ah! Can we have these two, you know, so that's why I was like, but we well, you know, the, the one question I would have is, do they not like it because they can't tolerate it? Or do they not like it because they think it's too expensive? Or like, that's, a, that's, I think, a, a good question to because if they don't like it, because it's too expensive, it's because they don't understand, they don't have an appreciation for the value of it. It was uh, the stomachs, both of them, which was a bummer. It wasn't. The yeah. Bummer, so I think I did tell him to switch over to vegan. We'll start there. I was just curious because it is a big, like you said, you, you know, you can't just go selling or sharing just the shake and you want that passion. So I yeah. was curious, you know, you know, but we, we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. Any other questions? I think we're good. I'm going to let you go. We appreciate your time. Uh, all joking aside, Michael, we love your humor and we appreciate everything you do. And we appreciate you taking the time to get on this call. Oh, well, thank you guys. Thanks for inviting me. I was telling Patrick, no one ever invites me to their calls. So <laughs> this is like a, this is an awesome. We'll so. have to do it again sometime then. Yeah, anytime. All right, thanks guys. Awesome, thank you. Bye. See you guys. Actually, Michael, before you go, yeah. we, do like this, we do a funny way of uh, showing our appreciation. Our, we, it's Team Boom. So okay. We do a little something at the end to end our calls. Okay. Okay. Just for you, okay. All, All right, right, guys. On three. I'm gonna. I'll let you All right. Give me One, what you think you can two, do, and then three. work from there. If you need to write the <laughs> Boom. 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 Awesome. <laughs> I'm used to having people boo at me, so it's actually a little boom. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. See you, guys. Bye. -bye. <laughs>